This is the plaintiff, Robert. He says the defendant owns a restaurant and is the head chef to boot. He worked as a line cook for him for a week. The defendant stiffed him on his pay, and he's here because he wants the $462 he's owed for the 33 hours he slaved away in the guy's kitchen. This is the defendant, Brian Jenkins. He says the plaintiff worked for him for a week, then never showed up for the next week of work, didn't even have the common decency to call him and let him know. He was a fool because he got concerned about the guy and was afraid something happened to him. What a sucker he was. Because the plaintiff simply blew him off, got another job, and didn't bother to notify him. This left him in a bad position. He lost money and is certainly not paying him because the plaintiff didn't live up to his obligations. He's accused of burning a cook. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court Next Case. In the docket, the plaintiff worked as a line chef for the defendant and says he got stiffed. But the defendant says the plaintiff just bailed without notice. It's the case of get in line. Robert, you've asked to be referred to only as Robert. You are suing Brian Jenkins and Sinatra, oh, Sintra, not Sinatra. <laughs> Sintra Restaurant, <laughs> you get that a lot? Sintra Restaurant, you're the owner, Mr. Jenkins, for $462 in unpaid wages from September 15th through the 19th. Uh, for 33 hours at $14 an hour. What were you doing for him? I was a line cook. Okay. And how long did you work for him? Uh, about three months or so. Okay. And at some point you decided that you wanted to take another job? Yeah. Um, just restaurant industry as a whole, not the easiest thing in the world. Um, was really stressed out, so just needed to change careers. So what'd you do? Um, went online. I talked to a couple friends. Got a job doing what, I mean? Oh, gotcha. Um, <laughs> uh, it's a third-party Apple store, so I'm a sales representative. Okay. Um, is that what you're still doing now? Yes, ma'am. Oh, you're done with the restaurant business? All right, so now you say to him when you get the new job, you give him two weeks' notice. Mm -hmm. Everything fine so far. And your two weeks' notice, you give him when? On the 12th of September. Okay. So the 15th through the 19th is week one of the two weeks. And then what happened the second week? So on the second week, um, so I usually had Sunday, Mondays off. So on Monday, I did training at my new job. Um, and then from there, uh, I was required to train the next day. But I didn't you know when your training was? Uh, honestly, no. They Why not? Just the way that they structured the training. They but were, why uh, wouldn't you just tell them I can't train this week? I still have an obligation at my prior employer because I gave him two weeks notice. I gotcha. Um, I, was just, I was just really stressed out at the time. You just didn't want to go back to work there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. it was, it's nothing against but, Brian. Oh, well, that's a, wonderful. It is something against Brian because Brian, what happened? Um, <clears throat> so he, he explained to me on a Saturday night that he didn't want to be in the business anymore and he was giving his two week notice. And I said, okay. <clears throat> Asked him what his new job was going to be like. He told me, and I said, if you'd like to keep your foot in the door and, and stay in any capacity, part-time, in case this new thing doesn't work out, I'd love to have you. You're a good guy. Everything was good. Was he a good um, line cook? Yes. And he said, thank you so much. I'll think about that. But right now, I'm just going to focus on this. So I said, okay, two weeks. Yes, two weeks. Because it's going to take me two weeks to find the person who replaces you. Mm -hmm. So I'm a small business owner. We're closed Sunday, Monday, so that everybody can have two days off, so that we only need to have one staff. Um, you know, it's the kind of place where Mark's family would come in and have dinner. Um, okay. It's the kind of place where one of the waitresses was his school teacher. Hmm. Um, it's just that kind of place, and we had that kind of relationship where, hey, let me know, and I'll work with you. So, so what happened? For him to not, so at 3 o'clock So he's on, supposed to show up on 3 o'clock on Tuesday. Right. At 3.30, I get a text from the lead cook, because I wasn't there. I'm, I, I opened a second restaurant. Oh, good for you. Um, Mark's not here. Have you heard anything? I said, no, nothing. Called him right away, went right to voicemail, sent a text. Mark, what's going on? Are you okay? Um, again, there's no one else for me to call. And How many cooks do you have in the kitchen? Th Too many? Four. <laughs> Four? Okay. And then, so when he's missing, now you have three. Yes. Okay, so go on. So... We have a, a horrible night. It got very busy. Um, customers had to wait longer than they would normally wait. 
people left because we had to go on a wait because the front of the house realized that the kitchen couldn't keep up at this point. So things went bad. And, and, and the next day, I get a text forwarded to me from my lead cook saying, here's what Mark sent me. And what was it? So the defendant saying, this guy screwed me over, so I'm just not going to pay him for the last week. Can he do that? I think he can. Two weeks is not too much to ask for. It's not too much to ask for, but can he justify not paying for the guy for the actual week he worked? I mean, all he did was ask him to give two weeks notice. There was well, that was a deal. Pay. That was the deal. Well, did I he get paid for the week he did? I think, yeah. He did his work. He gets okay, paid. Okay, you're getting mad. He gets paid. Huh? He did the work. He gets yeah. paid. But he also kind of screwed the, the owner over. Too bad. Oh, well, that's, oh, too bad, oh, going inside the courtroom. I understand I made a poor, immature decision. I'm sorry, I'm not going to be in for the rest of the week. Uh, Brian can mail me my last check. And I just couldn't. Nothing to you? No, no, geez, I'm me. sorry, this is what happened. I... Not until the week later when he said, hey, where's my check? Oh, then what? Then did he come see you or did he to Send call you? Sent me a text, you? said, Texted Zach, you? Texted you. Go ahead. Yeah, and every, that's the point is that on principle, we were cool. I tried to help him. I was a good boss. He had a good thing going in the profession that he went to school for, you know? And right. I mean, he obviously has a choice to he made the choice change his life. I, the thing is, if you give a guy two weeks notice, why don't you abide by it? It was a poor decision, clearly. You think? I do. Yeah. Um, you think it's, um, when it, you said some interesting things in your answer to the complaint, which is that, how old are you? Uh, 45. Okay, oh my gosh, you look so much younger. Uh, two restaurants and 40, good, good for you. Um, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who are you now? I'm a server. Who okay, you? gotcha. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't. But, um, and how old are you? I'm 22, Mel. 22. You made a comment about um, young people today, and I want to hear that from you verbally. Well, I'm thinking about the next boss that he has. Maybe he won't do this. You know, th that's why I did. Well, that's why I couldn't pay him, because there needed to be a consequence. He put my servers, who are my family, who single mothers. This is what they do for their livelihood. And he put us all in, in a bad place. Well, you're short-staffed. With, with right. no... Um, uh, uh, don't ham it up too much. But, <laughs> yes, I really think it's a, it, the height of irresponsibility on your part to give a guy two weeks' notice and then be such a baby. Because you're not, you're not like 14. You're 22. Man up. Pick up a, tell, go in, tell him whatever you feel like you need to tell him. But, my God, give the guy a little notice so he can get somebody else over there. All right? Mm -hmm. You didn't cause single motherhood. But you did cause a lot of grief for a lot of people that night. Alrighty. However, <laughs> having said all that, because I agree with you that in the karma sense, he wronged you. If a guy works, you gotta pay him. So, um, so I, I hear you, I agree with you. There was actually a Saturday Night Live skit a, a, a little while back, I don't know if you guys saw it, where um, it was kind of a commentary on this next generation, and I don't mean to pin all the sins, just your own, which is bad oh, yeah. enough. But you know, it, 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 that, and it's uh, some young woman walks into her boss says, I think I should get a promotion. <laughs> and the boss says, you've been here too much? She goes, I know, right? You know, like two months was more than enough time to have gotten a promotion and a raise. Um, you know, you, there really needs to be a sense of working towards the goals, and part of them is your word and how you look. However, that doesn't give you the right to not pay him. You still gotta pay him. Okay, so uh, he worked it, he's entitled to it. You, that's not a legal reason, it may be a karma reason, a, a moral reason, a, what goes around comes around reason, but it's not a legal reason. $462 verdict for the plaintiff. Sorry, both sides please. So the judge agreed with you completely, but when she said however, yeah, what did you think? Yeah, that's when I knew I was in trouble. Mm -hmm. um, it's unfortunate, but I feel like I feel like we accomplished something because I really do feel like he knows he made a mistake and maybe he won't make it again. All right. How are things going at, at the at the old joint? Really good. Amazing. We have, we have a yeah. the most talented lines cook we've ever got. So the service <laughs> is amazing too, just so you know. Really? What's so, it? What's the Centra, Centra in restaurant in Braintree? Mass. Braintree? All right. Money. Free meals for the for the crew here at the just People's Court. For you. All right. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. Nice to meet you. Yeah, you too. Thank you.
All right, so step on in here. Um, you didn't look that great in the courtroom, did you? No, I was really nervous. Yeah. Uh, I mean, what you did. Oh, yeah, it was, uh, it was an immature move. I know it was. Um, just personal reasons and everything else. I had to go right then and there. What have you learned? Uh, well, Brian's a good guy either way. Um, I learned that it's not right to just walk out on someone, and it's good to live up to your commitments. Okay. Harvey. Okay, now, um, if you actually um, don't get paid for work that you did, um, what you can do short of going to court sometimes is you call your state labor commission because they will actually mediate some of these disputes. They can pressure on a landlord, uh, put pressure on an employer, excuse me, uh, to do the right thing. 